In this video, we're going to talk about troubleshooting any connection problems we may have when building the BP synthesizer. One of the simplest tools to use to diagnose problems is the voltmeter. Most voltmeters will have a simple continuity tester. In this case, it would be this selection right here with what looks like sound and a diode symbol next to that. And when you touch the two leads together, you hear a tone. Using the multimeter continuity tester, I can test for the most basic connections. For example, I'm going to test pin 6 on the MIDI interface IC to A3 on the black pill board. And the beep confirms that we do have continuity from that pin to this pin. We can do the same from pin to pin on these two boards, A4 to LCK. Next, A5 to BCK. And last, A7 to DIN. I can also test 3.3 volts from the black pill board to the digital analog converter board. Ground. And likewise, to the IC chip. You would be amazed what such a simple test could help you realize what may not be working correctly. Another useful tool for troubleshooting problems is an oscilloscope. Over here on the left, we have a fairly fancy one. This one runs probably about $300. It's made by Handtech. It's an LCD scope. And this is a 100 megahertz scope. It can view high speed signals. This oscilloscope usually comes with a probe like this. This would be used for ground and either we would clip onto something or we could use this as a probe and check for signals. Now what a lot of people may have is this guy right here. This is the DSO-138 oscilloscope and for about twenty dollars you can get a bare bones version of this. This one I actually went ahead and got the case to mount it inside but for $20 you can get just the board inside of there and the screen and I believe you also get the leads that go with it. Now the probe on this is not as fancy as the other one but still we can use these leads. The black alligator clip here would connect to ground and the red one here would be used for our probe. We're going to use this cheap $20 oscilloscope to trace digital signals and other information on our BP synthesizer build by using these two test leads in combination with a couple wires. Later in the video, I'm going to refer to this one as ground, and this one I'm going to refer to as the red lead or the test lead. The black lead is going to connect up to the ground on our BP synthesizer board. The red lead we're going to move around as the video points out on different areas of the board. For example, this would be the 3.3 volts or positive voltage rail on our circuit board. The first point we are going to test is going to be the MIDI input signal which would be right about there. Then we'll move to that position and then we'll move to that position and so on. Using the cheap oscilloscope, the first thing I'm going to check is for ground. And I have the red lead connected to the ground on the power rail and the black lead connected to ground on the power rail. With my settings set to DC on this switch, 0.1 volts on this switch, X5 on this switch. We are indicating 0.5 volts per division with a time base of 2 milliseconds per division set to auto. Currently it looks like it's set to a falling edge trigger. It could be either falling edge or rising edge. It should not matter. 
Right now I have it set to two and a half volts triggering voltage, but again it should not matter. I have my little yellow arrow set right about in the middle of the screen over here. This yellow line here is indicating ground. Now I'm going to move the red lead to the 3.3 volt power rail on the breadboard. And now we see the yellow line has jumped up here and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six times 0.5 is 3 and a little less than half so that's roughly 3.2 volts. Next I'm going to move it over to the MIDI jack pin 5 which would be on the opposite side of the breadboard. When I do so this yellow line will go off the screen because the input side is 5 volts. Now we are off of the screen but now we should be able to press some keys or in this case I'm going to move the pitch bend wheel. And what we're seeing is digital information being sent. Now if we just press a key and hold it down we're not going to really see anything happen. We're going to have to press the key several times in a row to see anything indicate. So moving a mod wheel or a pitch bend wheel tends to be better because it keeps sending the MIDI message over and over and over. Keep in mind that pressing the MIDI key only sends one message very quickly but if we move the wheels it's going to send a message over and over and over for each new value. So now we've confirmed that we are getting a signal from the input side of our MIDI interface. Now let's move our test lead over to the other side of our MIDI interface which is pin 6 on our IC chip. Now we see our yellow scan line again and it's indicating right about 3 volts. Again I'm going to move the pitch bin and we can see digital information being transmitted. Here's the mod wheel and here's a key being pressed several times in a row. So that's a good indication that we are getting a MIDI signal at those points. Now let's move our test lead over to pin A3 on our black pill board. We want to put the lead somewhere in between the wire and the pin of the black pill board. Now let's test again. Moving the pitch bin wheel, I can see digital information. So again we have confirmed that we are getting a signal on the other end of the wire that is transmitting the MIDI serial data. Now we're going to move our test lead over to pin A4 on the black pill. A waveform like this should show up. Looking at this value right here being highlighted, we can press a button to go up so we can see the square wave that is being applied on that pin. This is the word clock signal from our I2S interface. Now if I press this upper right hand corner button down for a couple seconds, now that we can see the numerical data we can see that this waveform is running right around 32 kilohertz which is to be expected because we have configured this to be a 32 kilohertz sample playback. Let's return to full view. Now let's move our test lead over to the digital analog converter module onto the LCK pin. And we should see the same waveform as indicated here. This confirms that we are indeed getting the signal from the A4 pin over to the LCK pin. Next let's move our test lead over to the DIN pin on our digital analog converter module. If we are not playing anything at the moment, we should see nothing but ground. Now let's try pressing a few keys. What you're seeing there is the digital information being sent to the digital analog converter. It's going to vary quite wildly and it's going to be running at a very high rate. This cheap little oscilloscope cannot keep up with the data rate. But we can see the signals are getting through. If you press the key down and you don't see any information there, try moving the test lead over to pin A7 on the black pill board. And again, press the key. 
again we can see that we are getting digital information out of the pin A7. This confirms that the microcontroller is working correctly. So if you do not see any information on the other side of that wire that's connected to the digital analog converter module, then you probably have a poor connection somewhere in between pin A7 and pin DIN on the digital analog converter module. Now let's move the test lead over to pin A5 on the black pill board. Now we should see a waveform that resembles a triangle wave. If this were a better scope, we would see something that was more like a high speed square wave in the megahertz range. This scope cannot do one megahertz, so we're going to get some kind of odd waveform like this, but this helps us indicate that we are getting some kind of signal on that pin. Since we can see the signal on pin A5, we can move our test lead from pin A5 on the black bell board over to the BCK pin on the digital analog converter board. Let's do that now. And here we see the signal again. So this confirms that we are indeed getting the same signal on each end of the wire that goes from the black pill board to the digital analog converter module. These very simple testing methods can go a long way to help you troubleshoot problems in the event that you are having problems getting your synthesizer to work. Even with a cheap little $20 oscilloscope like this one, you can still roughly check the functionality of your synthesizer for digital information and other basic signals.